breakdown on how this whole thing was done. As you've seen in the full video, uh, where the chest is, on the ground there was some grass that was overlaid on top of the chest, and also as the person walked through the grass, the purple and green grass right here, there was also some overlay there, and that was just done, well, down here, we got the main still image, above that is the green screen, above that green screen is the grass overlay, which you can notice by the feet. Feet got covered up with a little bit of grass. There are just a couple masks on the main image. And then above that, that's the explosion. Here's the chest. And then above the chest, took made another copy of that still image and did a grass overlay on that. Which you see popped up right there, just to blend everything in a little bit better. As far as making the chest here glow and pulse like that, and then after it gets done, when it gets opened up, having it come out with these uh, god rays here and stop pulsing, that was all done through uh, fusion. So right now, it was just a, just put onto the chest uh, sequence, which is this uh, right here highlighted. If we go into the fusion page, just use two nodes, the glow node and the light rays, and add in an expression to them. So for the glow nodes, and I'll put the expression down in the, uh, in the description. As far as uh, open it up. As far as the uh, the glow goes, uh, I got the glow how I wanted it to be before adding the expression, and then I added this expression right here. Uh, and is what it does. It, it just flickers it back and forth with a sign uh, every eight frames. But then I added an if condition to it. Uh, I didn't want it to start. I didn't want it to continue flickering once the chest was open, which was around frame five twenty ish, something like that. Uh, so that's the reason for the if expression right here. It says stop flickering and stop doing this particular function after this frame rate. Uh, and then as far as the light rays go or the god rays go, did the same thing. Uh, got them all situated to how I wanted them to look. And then for that one, I went into the settings of the light rays and added it for the blend mode. And then did the same thing for the time uh, with another if expression. And that I'll post down into the comments too. As far as the blender side of things goes, uh, the chest was a download. I'll leave a link to that in the description. It did come in two pieces, the top and the bottom. Uh, it wasn't animated. I animated that uh, right here. The person walking, that's an image plane. Uh, one important thing I wanted to do was get shadows throughout the whole thing. Uh, and in order to accomplish that, uh, I did the Ian Hubert thing. I'll leave a note to that in the, in the description. I parented the image plane to the camera. And then you can follow his tutorial on that. He'll, he explains a lot better than I can. Uh, but then I just I changed the scaling, as you'll see in his video, of uh, the person walking forward. So I'll change this over to here. Uh, after you get everything parented and you follow his thing, change the scaling right here, the big image right here, or the big block right here. That is the uh, image plane of the green screen. And you'll notice as I shift through the timeline, it's going to move forward and backward. The scaling of it. And that was in order to keep the person's feet on the ground, still adding depth to it, like you'll see in his tutorial, and uh, be able to cast the shadows over the feet so things weren't hovering and everything kind of aligned up properly. Uh, just followed that image and tried to reenact the person opening the chest and just animated the top lid of the chest. Uh, as far as the little star things flying out, they were actually a snowflake from a different project that I had. Uh, I did add some effects to it. Uh, right here is the wind effect. There's another wind effect. There's a turbulence somewhere. There's a turbulence. Uh, just to move them around a little bit, I put an object on the inside as an emitter. Two objects on the inside as an emitter. One is a small one, and the second one is a cone, which you can see slightly right here. And then as the chest opens up, I had the cone scaling itself up and tilting back a little bit. I was fairly happy with that animation. And then just added a particle system using that snowflake as the, uh, the particles. Uh, I think that was about it. The blender side was pretty easy. Uh, I rendered that all out. One thing I did do is for the ground plane, that was changed to under the invisibility. Uh, that was a shadow catcher. I left that as a shadow catcher. 
And then as far as the image plane, I didn't want the image, in order to get everything to align up properly, as you see right now, the image is halfway through the chest. Uh, end result, it looked pretty good, but obviously you can't render it out like that. So I left the image, the green screen image. Uh, I didn't use shadow capture, didn't use hold down. Oh, I just disabled the camera. And by doing that, it didn't... It didn't poke through the box, but it also enabled the lamp. There's a sun lamp somewhere. Where is it? Oh, way up top here. Uh, I added this up here as a, a fake sun. There is an HDR for this, but I added this light up here, this lamp up here as a sun in order to cast the shadow down. And I had to play with the angles in order to get that how I wanted to do. Uh, along with the angles on that, I also played with the spread of it <coughs> and the size of it. And the size of it. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, in order to get the fall off of the shadow to how I wanted. I didn't want it too crisp and I didn't want it to completely wash out. And then uh I think that was about it.